recording. Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, July 3rd, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Daughter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. I'm the Wombat. <laughs> and we also have Dread Pirate Higgs. Welcome from Western Canada. Oh, yeah. Away from Kentucky. Uh, and John Richards from across the pond in England, London. Welcome. Yeah. Uh, and we have a new guest this morning, Fabi. Welcome, Fabi, to the show. Uh, we'd like to get into talking about you and uh, how you became an atheist and all that good stuff mm -hmm. after about the rest of the intro. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faith, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in town, well, you're just not. In Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us. And we'll tell you more about that after the mid-show break. Wombat, what's our topic today? Today, we're talking about a bunch of stuff. Uh, we're going to be talking about <laughs> Supreme Courts. We're going to be talking about why we shouldn't give up hope. We should be talking about voting. And then also why <clears> doom <throat> and gloom isn't the way to go, particularly in news cycles. But before we get into the meat and potatoes, we'll throw it up with some pasta with our own Dread Pirate Hicks for our weekly invocation. Uh, Quab be me captain, I shall not want. He maketh me to float in salt water. He steereth me through glassy seas. He filleth me bowl. He steereth me through the straits of noodleness, for goodness sake. I, though I sail through the heaving of tempestuous waters, I will fear not sinking, for thou art with me. Thy mast and thy rudder, they comfort me. Thou preparest a feast before me in the presence of me mates. Thou quenchest my thirst with grog. My goblet runneth over. Truly, pasta and grog shall abide with me all the days of me life, and I shall dwell in the galley of the quab forever. Robin. Welcome to the show, everybody, where we think hard, and thinking hard is going to be probably a running topic throughout this show in particular. Don't think easy, think hard. What do I mean by that? Well, it's easy to think easy. <laughs> it's hard to think hard it's more rewarding we'll get into more yeah, it's of that. the unknown unknowns we don't have exactly and so <laughs> you got to think hard to get through them whenever someone's giving you an easy solution yeah. or an easy emotion to reach for don't take mm -hmm. it got to have right. well, for the higher with, stuff right with apologies to don rumsfeld yeah. <laughs> but we do have some new faces here i figure we give some time to to introduce fabi you're on the show hey welcome hi thank you um my name is fabi I was born and raised in Mexico City. Wonderful. I went, I went to Catholic school <laughs> all my life up until um, college. My, my condolences. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, then I moved to Switzerland oh, while I was around cool. Germany, no. Italy. Um, and then I moved to Switzerland. I was there um, almost 18 years, 19 years. And uh, now I'm here in Tennessee, which is quite a shock, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of, I don't know, like moving from a country that is Catholic and moving to uh, Switzerland, which is religious, but not really. Like people don't pay attention to that stuff. Mm. Um, and I took, I realized I took a lot of things for granted because hmm. things work in in switzerland things work and um <laughs> i'm learning a lot it's, it's a learning cur curve to be here mm -hmm. but yeah well and where so, did you when and how or where did you uh lose your faith as it were good point well it was such a slow process because mm -hmm. i was never brought up into hardcore Catholicism. As you, or maybe as you will know, maybe you know, that in Mexico we have this intertwined thing between Catholicism and uh, indigenous beliefs. Yeah. So 
things that for me are normal, you know, TV shows, music, everyday life. We never pray before before eating. That, that wasn't in my family, but my grandma was deeply religious. So it was only for her that sometimes we will go to church, but it, it wasn't part of my daily life. So taking that in account, it was just like, I was like a light Catholic, let's call mm-hmm. it that way. Like I, I would like pray, but you know, maybe mm-hmm. for my exams, <laughs> you know, to, but um, it wasn't, it wasn't a, an important part of my life at that point. Then um, when I moved to Switzerland, uh, it happens so everything happens in such a way that I end up being uh, in a Catholic um, in a Catholic magazine and I write for them. Oh really? Wow. Yeah. Oh, you mean working for them? Yeah, working for them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so, but not myself being in the church in Switzerland because in Switzerland you have to be um, registered. Mm -hmm. So whenever I had to do um, an interview or something or go to church for these people, like I had to wait outside because it's it's a huge deal, you know, like I didn't to get into trouble with that because I didn't pay my my 10 percent tax. So I didn't want to get into trouble because of that. There's a 10 percent tax. What? It's a tie, right? Yes. Yes. And, And it's a federal tax. So you have to be. You have to be, <laughs> yes. When, when you move somewhere. Switzerland, you're going down in my, in my places I want to live. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a lot of people think like Switzerland. like. But it's voluntarily, right? I mean, yeah, yeah you don't of have course. To. But I can tell you, for example, like if, if you're there and if you're, um, if you're there and if you're, um, if you're married to a Catholic person, you're automatically Catholic. Like me as a person from somewhere else then it's a whole process to get out of there so you can have your money back or whatever like it's, it's really uh, so when i was there i was married and my ex-husband at the time uh he told me my my ex-husband told me you know maybe don't say that you're catholic or anything or you come from a catholic mm. country because then you're not gonna charge me and wow. i had to and i had to pay to he had to go through a whole process he yeah is is voluntary in the sense of you have to you have to register with the register. church before you they'll tax you for it. Yeah. But the part of I don't know in other religions, I can just tell you that in the Catholic part, like he was automatically Catholic because he was born into a Catholic family. He had to write a letter to the Vatican to get excommunicated in order to wow. get um He's he's uh, out of money back. Registry. Get yeah, his money back, just, <laughs> and just not be tax tax yeah. for it. Yeah. So that's wow. Yeah, that's a huge. Yeah, thing. we don't have that option here. Our face, <laughs> but George W. Bush put an uh, executive order in when he was in office that money from collected by taxes from the U.S. citizens can be given directly to churches in the time of emergencies like hurricanes, earthquakes, that type of thing. But uh, it just really opened the door. And now they're, the Supreme Court and all this other, they're saying that uh, up in Maine, especially, that they can just take your tax money and give it to churches without your permission. So yeah. it's, it's, it's going awesome. in that direction that, it, that it's going to be bad in the future. Yeah, so it's dangerous. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Just one yeah. quick point on, on and life in, in different places with Catholicism. I am aware. So I've had some chances to go to different places too. I've been in in in, in Sweden for for a bit, and then I know Boudreaux, You've also had Catholic school upbringing, um, I think, and and I think we have a like pretty much international show here. Dreads from Canada, John Richards from UK, uh, uh, George Brown is also from Tennessee, and and Larry's from Kentucky. But we're familiar with that Catholicism tends to change specifics of what's needed so that it can be more ingrained in the culture of the local area that it's trying to you know proselytize in and so because of that there's a jamaican version of catholicism there's like a korean version of catholicism like have you ever walked into like i've walked into korean churches and saw like a korean jesus on a cross and i'm like this is very bizarre but i've seen black jesus on crosses too when i have family from nigeria and i'm like they are just shifting it and they're hoping that no one's talking to each other and that's like that is like the crux of the insidious nature of Catholicism is like, it's not about 
the story because we can change the story. It's about normalizing it among groups. So we get that tax money, baby. We, <laughs> we get that 10%. And there's, I, a in, in for there's a term in marketing for that. There's a term in marketing for that. And it's called tropicalizing your product, which means that you, you take whatever you're selling and make it appealing to the people. Yeah. Uh, there's absolutely a lot Whatever of the location is. Yeah. Localizing. Yeah. It, it's yeah. also it's also called exacting uh, the the symbols of the indigenous culture, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And, and making them conform to uh, whatever religious uh, thing you're trying to push. I'm going to throw one last thing. It's also why there's no there's why it should be called why there's no spicy salsa in Tennessee grocery stores in California. There's like spicy salsa. You get like medium, mild, and then like spicy but in tennessee there's no spicy there's no spicy we'll in, tennessee. in texas they got them in california they got them in tennessee you have to really drive far i have to drive out of my town just to get like one thing of spicy food it's so crazy wow. grocery stores all bland it's like no that's spicy enough anyway guys we were we should do a quick round table before we hit into more topics Fabi, we really appreciate you on the show dread yeah. part what's been going on for you since well uh it was on friday of course it was uh you know the pastafarian holy day and of course, that coincided with Canada Day. Nice. So um, I have uh, I have a float which was not ready for the occasion. So I uh, I dressed up my um, my Audi, <clears throat> which looks like a blueberry. So I call it the SS Blueberry, <laughs> and uh, and uh, drove it around with uh, in the parade, and just had that song. It was a parade? Um, oh yeah, we That's had awesome. a parade. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I just uh, had on a loop, um, always look on the bright side of life. And so nice. I, I, me and my uh, cohort, uh, we sang our, our lungs out uh, to the song through the course of the parade. It was probably lasted a good half hour at least. Um, so it was a lot of fun spreading I, the good I, word. You're saying it's fun, but I'm really disappointed that Canada Day is not just called Canada Day. <laughs> Right. Uh, yeah, why, why not just make it one word, right? <laughs> just make it one Canada word. Day. It's right there. You only, it's one Canada letter. Day. It's one extra okay. letter. That's it. Canada Day. Right. Boudreau, good to see you. How you been, my friend? I've been good. I've been good. Uh, uh, Larry and I tried to do the show last week. It was just the two of us. So. Mm -hmm. Just the two of us. We've been there. Yeah. We've been Larry and I have been doing that yeah. for like a couple of years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> good conversation. Yeah. The, things are good. I had a wonderful trip to to Greece and was able to do Looks the like show you had from there. Travel back. Yeah, yeah. It was a, uh, it was a little a little tough. Twenty four hours of being up, but hey, home. Twenty four hours of being up. Wow, geez. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. What's the first thing you did when you were back in and in breathing the freedom of American air? Uh just slept. Nice. <laughs> Hit the bed, my own bed. It was like ah, oh. but uh, yeah. So. Wonderful, glad wonderful. To, glad, to be back. I'm glad you're back in one piece. John Richards, I know you always got something on your plate. How have you been in the last two weeks? Well, the reason I couldn't take part last week is because the lady of our house is in hospital. She's oh. uh, she's had a very dangerous condition, but uh, fortunately she's coming round. She's um, on the mend, although Good. it's going to, it's going to take another two weeks of hospital and a further six weeks of recovery. Ooh. So it, it was a serious condition. Anyway, I'm, I'm fine, and uh, my channel has had a makeover by Swedish Steve, who you all know, guys, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and he's, he's doing a wonderful <coughs> job. It's magic to have a producer who's got all this software and can make everything look so up-to-date and professional. So take a look at Global Atheist News, the, the revised Global Atheist News, and uh, watch as, as the channel all becomes more updated than that wonderful nice. i'm always up to more faceless speaking of which john richards you're looking younger today than i maybe it's just been a while but like you've got more of this dark hair situation going on you got like this like rosy tint to your face i don't know what's going on but yeah 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 it's, <laughs> there's more facelifts than one uh let's see larry Rhodes. <laughs> always good to see you how you been what what have you been killing virtually in the last couple of weeks oh everything no i've been uh <laughs> fighting world war ii basically and uh it's called uh, oh goodness what's the name of it call of duty i'm terrible with names my my the part of my brain that has names in it 
is malfunctioning and has been for 20 years. Fair enough. But I, I, with the Quest 2, I've been playing a lot of virtual games. And lately, I've gotten into virtual chess. And it's a lot Ooh. better for me to see actually see a board in front of me with pieces that I can move around instead of the two-dimensional thing. So uh, I spent a lot of time playing chess the last So I do have weeks. a problem with this statement because it's a, it's, it's a $400 headset with electricity and the carbon footprint that comes associated with that. And you could buy a chess board for like Yeah, but I can't have $2. somebody pl play me who, you you know, have people anywhere in the world. You have children. You have a... <laughs> no. Uh, well, she doesn't yeah. want to play very much. Okay, okay, uh, okay. okay. Yeah, she, I mean, I'm lucky to get a game a month out of her. Can you but, knock the board if you get angry online? Can you just like, ask me? <laughs> Nor do I want to. Okay, okay, okay. You Don't have your own very own Ivanka. Oh, <laughs> yeah. very true. George Brown, the second and a half. Why as well take yourself off mute? Give us an update. How you been, my friend? <laughs> oh boy. Um I'm okay. Uh, it's it's a little hard for me to get here on time on, on uh, Sunday mornings. I really uh, you know, it's it's like I'm wired to sleep in on Sunday mornings, and we're doing this show an hour earlier than we used to, and it it can just be really hard for me to get up on time sure. out of the bed. I'm so we are speaking about Supreme Court rulings, but one ruling I am looking forward to among the weirdest situations is when they finally get rid of daylight savings time in yeah. America. Yeah. I'm hoping we can at least get that this year. We'll see. But, you know, we're getting close to the end of the half hour. I'd at least like to introduce the topic. John Richards, you're probably the best suited for this Global Atheist News Review representative. Uh, would you mind introducing the concept of what happened in the Supreme Court overseas across the lake and in, in the grand old USA? Yeah, well, uh, um, Overseas is where you want me to, to speak about, isn't it? Yeah, because the what happens in the US usually spreads because uh, the US is regarded particularly by itself as the, <laughs> the lead nation. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, other where the mighty go, you know, the four, the lesser will follow after. So we've got ripples trans transferring around the globe of the the outrage that was committed by the so scotus mm. last week and uh, for example in uh italy there's a, been a chorus of condemnation and alarm from the political left because of course they didn't want roe versus wade to be undone and but on the right in Italy, some have called it a great victory and hoped, uh, expressed the hope that Italy and Europe would follow suit. Oof. There you go. Mean, meanwhile, in uh, Ireland, the island of Ireland, there's been a similarly swift and passionate response because it's only recently that Ireland itself uh, decriminalized ab abortion so that was in 2018 and there were a lot of celebrations <laughs> at that time but the wound has now been picked of course so they're at each other's throats again and they've mentioned the story of one Savita Halapanava who died of sepsis in mm -hmm. Ireland in 2012 because she was not allowed a termination and they're warning that America be looking forward to a number of these similar events. I'm sure. So I'm going to stop there while you do some reaction to that. And I can, I can come in again and tell you more about what's happened elsewhere around the world. And okay. What do you think? So when we do come back on the show, what we will be talking about is uh, uh, Roe versus Wade. Give a, and the, it's overturning and give some thoughts on that, but not, in the global atheist news version where it's just here's bad news going on around the world what do you think about <laughs> that what's your opinion of it? like no we're actually gonna try to figure out some good things that we can pull yeah, from this because yeah, the yeah, hope is not yeah. lost and it's good that yeah. there is outrage that's a good thing yeah. outrage to yeah. bad news is a good thing but we yeah. don't have time for this half we'll come back to it in the second half and we got eight people sure. on the show so let's try to keep our responses short so we can go through everybody 
But uh, yeah. Larry, why you mind taking this out? And then we come back and we can dig the rest of the show too. Well, it's a little early yet. It's only 20 minutes into the show. But uh, that'll give us more time next for the next half. I think so. Uh, stay tuned for the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour at WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and this is WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, back to the topic. Nice. We're talking about Roe versus Wade, the overturning and the outrage that's coming from it. And and my opinion, just as a quick point, I think outrage is a good indication that public opinion is not on the side of this. And it's while we could be controlled by the the opinions of nine people, right, or truly, you know, six people, uh, yeah. which is a conversation in its own right. The fact that we are outraged by this is my indication that there is hope. Hope for changing this, hope for getting more rights for women, hopes for, you know, not, I feel like rights were murdered for women. And, and that is an indication that things were never balanced to begin with. And so if anything, this should be considered a wake up call for why women who can vote in this country should, why they need to be better represented, and that the status quo that we had before was not in their favor, because it's the status quo that took away these rights in the first place. Let's use that as indication for when we should vote. And we can talk more about when to vote towards the end of the show. Fabi, uh, I'm leaving the floor to you. Do you have any uh, thoughts on that recent overturning? Yes. <laughs> um, more than thoughts and opinions, I think that it's important to have hmm. facts. Um, when you know that uh, I, can, I can go through stories and all the stuff that I've been reading and they're heartbreaking, uh, just recently, a ten-year-old uh, rape girl from Indiana that that uh, that had to be sent elsewhere. Like, I mean, there's ter- this is going to cost lives. That's how I see it. Um, um, what I see the worst part of this all is the um, the trigger the trigger laws that were in place in states like Tennessee, that is no exceptions for this situation. That is very, very angering. It it stresses me out. It makes me feel like there is absolutely no um, help for women in in, in these red states, Um, yet, like you want to spin it off to a nicer part, I would say just there are several, uh, to make it shorter, there are several ways that one can help. One of them is going online. There is, uh, can I say, can I say <laughs> the, um, the, um, the addresses, the internet sure, addresses sure, for, sure. okay, for help. There is one that is uh, made by a wonderful doctor if you can read it, uh, you can search her on Instagram. Her name is Jennifer Lincoln. And the name of the site is freeforfreedom.com. Uh, there's also the Bridget Alliance, which helps people with the, of red uh, states with the expenses to go to states that they uh, can have an abortion. So that thing, I wanna, I wanna end up in the positive note, which is that there's people doing stuff uh, we should, uh, people that <laughs> that wants to help should help and that's the way to do it there yeah ways. and and as a quick heads up when i say like we're focusing on positive i pull it from like experience of being a black person in this country and like when we had news for eric gardner's killing uh unlawful kill and we're lawful but completely unjust killing because we have a society that's not in favor of like all minority groups or javier ambler or or george floyd Brianna Taylor, the list of names go on. It's easy. It's so easy to give up in, in the face of like those sorts of injustices. It's so easy yes. to give up. But yeah. you, I have to think that there's giving up and letting go is in favor of these injustices continuing. <clears throat> and the only way that I can pick myself up and continue to try to fight to get rid of these things is by not giving up, is by seeing a hope, is by coming up with a plan of action. 
And that's what I'm encouraging us to do. That's the positivity behind it. That's what I'm trying to want to do. Because we can sit here and argue. I agree. I think we all agree that this is a terrible thing. Let's mm -hmm. try to encourage people to not be even more burdened by, you know, the, the injustice that's happening and try to come up with a plan of action. John Richards, what do you think? Well, this isn't really a positive thing, but it is an attempt to get the negative back to zero. And it's Amazon, Disney, JP Morgan, Meta, they've all agreed to allow their employees to charge their travel costs to yeah. abortion clinics out of the state from their health insurance policies. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. That's, that's, good, that's good, but, good, but not good enough. Exactly. Yeah. Good, not good enough. I love it. Dread Pirate Higgs. Uh, you know, it, it's a specter of theocracy, right, that this whole thing is about. And, yes. you know, again, as I've you know, stated on other shows and, and this show before too, is the numbers don't lie. Uh, Christianity is a minority now in the United States and really around the world. Yeah. Um, and so at the, at the expense of people of all other faiths and those without uh, a religious affiliation, um, these people are trying to push their own agenda. And I really feel it's more like the death throes or the death knell of, of Christianity is now they're, they're just kicking and screaming yep. and throwing a tantrum yep. to try and get everyone to do their thing and to believe yeah. in what they have to say and uh, bend to their will. It, it's, I, and that's the positive thing I see right. is that it is the death knell, the death throes, the death rattle, as it were of uh the, the christian kingdom larry yeah. please oh you're on mute my friend 60 percent of us want uh abortion the <clears throat> right to abortion to be illegal uh and there's very little room for middle ground here i think that th this decision will knock a lot of fence sitters off the fence yeah. and yeah. show yeah. the harm of complacency mm -hmm. yeah. harm uh, of complacency I love it. This, I agree with Dredd that this is a last gasp attempt to control the country through religion. Yeah. And when it fails, I don't think there'll be a, a, another comeback. I think it'll be over. And what I also love about it is the idea that Christianity does this or the, the specter of Christianity does this and explicitly supports it too, but also tries to say at the same time, but God loves everybody and God wants rights for everybody. And God right. wants people. It's like, you can't be yeah. on both sides of the, of the gay parade, my friend. You can't be right. <laughs> holding, <laughs> gays are terrible sign. And then also holding up, but God loves everyone in the middle of the parade. It's like, no, 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 no. One of these guys is right. And the ones on the edge who are damning us all are putting citations on their posters. So <laughs> get out of here. But yeah, I do feel like we're out or Christianity is outpacing the support that it has particularly with the new generation of children who are growing up with this outrage, who will suddenly see this is not the color or of a God that I feel like has any relevancy in my life. Uh, George, I believe I saw your hand up. What's up? <clears throat> I'm trying to remember. <laughs> Fair enough. It's, um, yeah, uh, you know, coming from a Jewish atheist background, um, I feel like I'm in bizarro world. And uh, just watching this, this, um, this theater play out and and it's uh, of course it's frightening and i think that dread pirate was right and larry was right that that um th this is the death throes the you know the the uh, death rattle of something i'm not quite sure what but uh, i i do think that there there's going to be a backlash against this backlash and i wish i, I wish i would be a, a, um, young enough to see it, and I, I don't think I'm going to last that long, frankly. So I'm I'm sad about that. You know, it's like I've always wanted to see um, uh, Donald Trump get a cream pie right in the face. Hey, this is He's FCC. Paranoid. I want to live. FCC. He's really I want paranoid to, about that FCC. Too. You know, and, and so I want to live long enough just so I can see that happen, and this is motivating to me. Good for you. Good for you. I, I left some spite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think Fabby had her hand up there. Just so uh, go for it. Go for it. Uh, Dread, yeah. and then yeah, I was just gonna say um, I did read uh, to add another um, website, change.org. 
check it out. There's some really good petitions going on there. Some that are, yeah. are over 500,000 names already. Yes. So that's pretty substantial. Um, also, I read of a response by a governor who is looking to expand uh, the number of seats in the Supreme Court. Uh, you know, and I guess it's been a long time coming in some circles. Um, so maybe there's uh, maybe the, there's some hope that um, it'll be more representative of uh, the nation as a whole, mm. rather than um, you know just the, the, the Christians or the the what are the Republicans uh, you know, foisting their own um, self interests into into the Supreme Court. So. It's a very bizarre yeah. situation, you know. Uh, I do. I would like to hear from everybody else who hasn't had a chance to speak up. Boudreau, did you have thoughts on this? Sure. Um, I think the, the one point I haven't heard yet, and it might tie into what we'll talk about later, is that all of this is happening. Young people are getting, you know, riled up and, and rightfully upset. Maybe it's going to encourage some more voting. You know, maybe yeah. it's going to encourage more. Uh, you know, there are people that just generally speaking, I don't know, but unfortunately, it seems like young young people just don't like to go and vote and MTV is not around anymore. So uh, we can't rock the vote. So <laughs> um it just maybe that's a silver lining here that <clears throat> fence sitters will get out and vote. Uh, um, I, I started to worry that we had a, a, a uh, during the kind of the Trump cloud. Uh, I felt like we felt like we got a lot of um, uh, Republicans out voting that normally didn't um, because of the red hats. But hopefully this will swing the pendulum will swing the other way. Yeah, you know. I've just gotten to the point where I can see a red hat out in public and not cringe or like have a visceral <laughs> reaction of like, oh, oh, it's like, oh, it's a red hat, but it's a golfing hat. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, in my head, that's my personal <laughs> thing. Buffalo George would love to get your opinion on this too. <clears throat> well, I, I don't have a uterus, so I don't have strong opinions. So I'm going to uh, challenge that just real quick. And, and Fabi, I think you might get this, but like when I, when we're going through Black Lives Matter and we're still going through it even now today, one of the things I hated to hear was supportive white people who weren't willing to speak up because they thought it wasn't their fight. When the entire fight was, please speak up because this narrative of black people saying that this is a problem is gone tired on the ears of white people who are a problem. And if they could oh. hear it from other people, it would really help our voice. So like yeah. in the idea of, I don't have a uterus, so I'm not gonna say anything. I would really wish, I really wish that would go away. I really would wish that there was more of a unified sense of this is something, whether I have a uterus or not, like yeah, yeah, this affects yeah. everybody. Yeah. yeah, I said I didn't have a strong opinion that I want to project. Get but a stronger I, one. I, 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 of course, uh, do have some opinions on it. And, and, uh, and I worry um, about the impact on democracy and the fact that this is going to split the, the states from one another much more. I don't, I don't worry about well, I think mm. women are going to find ways of either using the pharmaceutical approach or um, states that have abortion rights to, uh, to when things settle, that they'll get the help they need. Mm. Uh, some will, of course. But um, um, yeah, I, I really worry about what it's likely to do to our deteriorating de democracy already or split. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Until the old, until the old farts, the old white farts die away, and the young people, young people's opinions start to prevail, uh, what's going to happen in that interim? John Richards, look like you've been chomping at the bit for a bit. <laughs> well, I don't have a uterus either, but I came from one. Yeah, my mother had a uterus. <laughs> We're all pro uterus here. <laughs> and my daughters, my daughters have uteri. If that's the plural, oh, yeah. So I'm very much in favor. <laughs> so I'm very much in favor of the owners of these things being able to control them. Mm. Yes. Anyway, um, what's been noticeable to me over the last couple of weeks is the juxtaposition between what the SCOTUS did last mm. week in your neck of the woods mm. and what's happened, probably in your neck of the woods too, but certainly here, massive support for gay pride assemblies marching through london brighton everywhere fantastic it's a you know the, it's a it's a stark contradiction between you know the the, the extremes where you know the, the christians don't like any of this stuff 
but we've shown them. We've shown them with the gay pride support how wrong they are. Good. Good point. Very nice. Nice. And finally, f- finally, I've got a wicked mind. So I've got something even better for Donald Trump than George's cream pie. Here's what I want to do. I want to weaken every tear off strip of his toilet paper in the middle so that his finger goes through. <laughs> Just sprinkle a little sawdust in the paper mill that makes Donald, uh, Donald Trump's toilet paper. That's yeah, sawdust, oh, actually, yeah. that's a call to action. My apologies. Though, wouldn't that be a great idea? How about that? There we go. Fabi, go for it. Yeah, coming back to your comment about the uterus and da-da-da. <laughs> Whereas, yes, somebody, it's important to talk from experience, yes. Mm. But it is also important to have the support of the men in our lives. It's important that also men raise their voices because there's, again, we have to go to the facts. What is going to happen if some, this thing is gonna affect the poorest people, mm-hmm. the minorities, yep. mm-hmm. black, brown. Yep. White people mm-hmm. is not gonna be affected, right? Rich people is not gonna be affected. Exactly. Uh, it's gonna put at risk several other people. It's important to, um, to also insist that this is not to protect life. Mm. It is a Trojan horse, I'm afraid, also. It's going to come with several other things, such as, for example, my birth control. Uh, last month was a price, now it's another. It's no longer covered by, my, uh, by what I was using. So now it's triple more expensive than I used to pay in Switzerland. So yep. that's another thing. They're coming for that. Don't don't be don't be fool that is not, they're not coming yeah. for that stuff. It is important to to for the men in, in, in our lives to to speak up, to vote, to talk to the women in your lives, to be a safe heaven for other women. Um, it is important also to think about the economical approach in the common economical approach that we are gonna have about this. Um, this is going to get expensive. Yep. We don't. Ha- they talk about saving lives, but they don't talk about let's expand Medicaid. Let's have let's have some sort of healthcare for these women. Let's uh, support. Let's have legal uh, support for these women that will be able to sue their fathers, the fathers for the for the child support. None of this is being talked. So then is when you know it's not about life. It's about control. Mm-hmm. And that's a problem for me. That's the it big is. problem. So um, it is important to vote, as you say, but it's also important to to have a proactive approach to the situation. What can you do right now? Right. What are and you? I, do right now? And I absolutely love it. So in in the specifics that you provided, so expanding Medicaid. Um, expanding legal access for women, uh, uh, in my opinion, improving research acts costs money for men birth control, because right now there's mm-hmm. only a few solutions for men, but we have the research that demonstrates that we know how to make like sperm tails, like uh, not be able to be as motile. So then you can take a thing that tastes like bubble gum and be basically, <laughs> but men don't want to fund that research. And it's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's right there. Anyway. Uh, so I, I, I greatly support that. And I also think that it's recognizable that we have a demographic that's ruling on women that are not impacted by any of their rulings whatsoever. And that's always a dangerous situation because that's not representation. That is basically just authoritation, if anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dred, what do you think? Um, I, I think it might help to actually reframe uh, the whole issue uh, because of course, to date, it's been about, you know, the camps are pro-choice and pro-life. And I think that that is not the proper way to frame this because really it should be framed as uh, pro-autonomy mm. and pro-ideology because mm. that's really what it is. I love it. I love that. Yeah. Good one. Boudreaux. It, yeah, I, I guess back to the, the idea of, of having a uterus or not too. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think about, I have a daughter, of course, and George's granddaughter. So I, that's obviously where there's a lot of conversation with, with my 14 year old on that, but I also have a son and maybe in the spirit of our conversation here, maybe the hope here is that younger, younger generation of men are going to be better than, than my generation, a bunch of mm. sleazeballs, and maybe they're going to be more responsible. Maybe they're going to 
uh, you know, bring change to kind of how things happen, you know, uh, with, with young, young kids, maybe being more responsible, like you're saying, maybe men are more involved in the, in the contraception, uh, birth control. So I, it's a little bit of hope. I'm, I'm, I'm doubtful because I just, I know, uh, I know what men think of and, <laughs> you know, and teenagers. So maybe, maybe there's some hope there. Maybe, maybe we're going to have a better generation of more responsible, uh, um, sperm owners. Well, well I, maybe I can come in here because my 14 year old daughter is going to school next week to learn about how to put a condom on a dildo. Hmm. They're teaching that. Hmm. And it, it's moved on because back in my day when I was a teacher, we had to manage with bananas. <laughs> Man, so now I'm just really confused. I'm sorry. So I am coming from this from a bit of an asexual point of view, but like I thought it was the guy who put the condom on. So I was a girl. Oh, okay, maybe we're getting too much into this. All right. Anyway, I did think. Okay, I'm just wondering. I have I have weird thoughts. Anyway, uh, women can't represent them. Can't represent, or I feel like this is just another barrier for having women representation in political offices when we have laws that denigrate them in terms of their autonomy compared to like what a man goes. Like a man is elected into office, he has laws that don't say, "Hey, by the way, you can't shake. You can't." pat yourself on the back you can't shave your hair on on wednesdays yet for women they come in with all this extra baggage and i feel mm -hmm. like these laws that we set in are also dog whistle obstacles that we put up for more women representation in yeah, yeah. and yeah, make yeah. it more of a boy society you look at congress right now in america it's it's a sausage party like i want to make a point clear that democracy in usa didn't start good and and then suddenly devolved to where it is now like it was the worst thing possible and especially from my point of view as a black guy who was here like we weren't even yeah. three-fifths of a person even back then we were just property yeah. and now, so women weren't either <laughs> and women, women were, yeah, you're right and women, women yeah. were out of, I, they had it they i mean listen it was not a fun time for anybody so in the grand trajectory of where we're going it has gone up, but I feel like it was a painful process and we're still going to have those pains. And I think it's a good thing that we have them because it's an indication that it's a fuel for change, right? Because if this mm -hmm. happened and everyone was copacetic about it, we went to work the next day. That's the danger. That's the problem. That's when it becomes commonplace that we accept it. Black women always have it bad. Uh, listen, yeah. in my, I, I hate writing this because it's terrible, but like Indians aren't even here anymore. Native Americans aren't even here anymore. The fact that we still call them Indians, that's terrible. But the next bracket on that list is a black woman <laughs> and so if you if we're talking about things that you can give you know give appreciation for how hard it is with all the stereotypes that we put on all the legal justification the biases that we yeah. put on them the yeah. biological needs the medical support that they require and then mm. imagine that life even without black skin as a woman in america is not good you need, and we need to do what yeah. we can to support that uh yeah. uh fabby and then george what's up fab as you say, like black women had it bad and they still have it bad right now. And also to, I don't know, I hope that this opens the door for politicians and people are more action towards that they bring women into the, into the equation. To well, <laughs> well, well I, I, know, I, know, I know the ones that right now they are very loud. Uh, the Republicans are very loud, Marjorie and Lauren and all of them, they are very, very loud and with points that they are absolutely insane. But, <laughs> but we have Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, for example, and yeah. we still have some, uh, yeah. a little bit of Hillary. So I don't hold that against you because we had Ben Carson as the only black guy that Republicans are talking about. I'm like, that's not a black guy. That's just a sleepy, <laughs> oh, that's just a sleepy dude they pulled out of a hospital. Sure. <laughs> this guy Herschel that is just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> like, I don't don't know. Thomas. It's like if you don't support the, the 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 representative needs of that group, you're not a representation of that group. You're just the the totem that's being yeah. used as a prop by the group Most that's true. further causing injustice against that. But yeah, I'm sorry for interrupting that. No, it's okay. I was, I was just thinking like it's also it's also sad that we have to come back to those to those. Mm -hmm. They were talking about oh, we have to make like an underground railroad for abortions. No. Yeah. <laughs> we cannot accept this. We cannot accept this because right. it's not only we're right now making a, um, 
a sh we're only putting um, a light, shedding a light into the sexual part of the situation. Like, oh, you don't want, you don't want kids, just don't have sex. It's not about that. It's also about there are women that are married, uh, we, or people with uteruses that are married, and it happens that it's a rape or they have a, an ectopic pregnancy. All of that has consequences, legal consequences too, for the hospitals where it happens, especially if it's in a red state. So we're not taking into account that the cost, the health the health care cost is gonna be humongous hmm. of these situations. So I'm just like, it's not only the part of the recreational sex, it's also other things. I agree. Mm. George Brown, okay. second and a half. I hope you remember, you got your hand raised up and it's been at least a minute. Let's see, let's test <laughs> well, it. Well, um, you know, I, this is the, um, the wedge issue that's fronting an entire movement where from my vantage point, what I see the, um, the religious right, and it's not all Christians, believe me, hmm. um, they are afraid that their way of life is threatened and they're resisting like hell. Right. They're, they're fighting back with everything they've got. And the everything they've got is taking mat different forms, and there's cruelty to it. Mm. We will stop you if you try to oppose us, yep. and we're going to show you. So in my state, Tennessee, for instance, recently, uh, it, be, it was a, a law was passed that is a felony now to sleep on public property. Mm -hmm. mm. Think about that. Mm. So yeah. they're going to spend taxpayer money locking up people because they slept overnight. Oh, in the no. park and they had no other choice yes you have, yes you have a very that's the cruelty therapy. jesus is love and we're gonna kick yeah. you in the butt and, the, yeah, and yeah. you bring up a really sincere point because of all the things scotus could have ruled on you know mm -hmm. in terms of like decriminalizing homelessness in america like we spend 70 million dollars per state just kicking homeless people from one state to the next state or from out of parks and stuff like that per state that money could have gone to like housing, uh, better, you know, detoxing centers, uh, better uh, access to hotlines or staffing places that can do emergency help for people who need to get to the streets and find a place of, over their heads, hotel fares, et cetera. We don't spend it on that. Instead, we spent all of this time and energy on overturning rights that we gave to women already a generation ago. It's like, why waste time? Now all of our focus is taken off of the things that we could have used to make this country better and focusing on repairing and fixing things that you purposely deliberately broke. Uh, it's called distraction. It's called distraction. Yeah, because they're, they're, meanwhile, they're hiding the nuclear weapons inside the, the shark tanks with the lasers on their head. It's like, <laughs> what are you guys trying to distract us from? Fabi, what's up? Let's not forget also that they're criminalizing uh, this situation. It's not only uh, forbidding abortion, they're criminalizing the doctors the suppliers, yeah. abortion oh. pills, and the patients. What is yep. the end game with this? Tying up this with what is happening in Tennessee, because I'm also in Tennessee, uh, with the with the homelessness. They are trying to make the um, the base of the of the voters smaller, 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 uh, until it's just white men that can vote. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Is what's next? Taking away the women's right to vote too? Yeah, that, right. that's how they, they criminalize you. So, and a felony, when you commit a felony, you're not able to vote. Right. Well, that, that's called gerrymandering, and it's happening in the uh, in the Supreme Court right now. They're discussing it. They also no, wanted, uh, I was going to mention too that that senator I, I mentioned also wants to get rid of the filibuster. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so a lot of political topics. I want to remember what our calls to action are. So I'm going to do a quick summary and then round table, and then we can lead to the end of the show. But uh, if you are a man, whether, or if you, or if you're a man with a uterus or without a uterus, let me just tell you, it's important to know the topics that are important that to, to the, the decision that happened to an America or to America today. Don't just say, Hey, I support women's rights. Think about what that means. Think about what that logistically would require you to do. Right. And, and my opinion, it's speaking up, but also understanding where the issues are, expanding Medicaid, expanding rights and access to women to legal support. Uh, in my opinion, if you're in the scientific sector, force or support birth control options for men. If they're doing it in public schools, support that. If they're putting condoms on, on dildos, I, I guess would the alternative be guys know how to put sponges 
in in, in <laughs> ham sandwiches i don't understand i'm not the best person on that but like we just had pride month understand what those terms mean like there are people out there who aren't the same like everyone else and and you need to know the topics you also need to know the political things but also know that if you are in the u.s we have early voting in two weeks and instead of waiting for a gerrymandered division that you're in, in, in interested in to only get one voting booth for a number of populists to stand in line for hours and then hope with the hopes that you don't get full representation go vote now or in two weeks and then make your voices known you please do not sit on the fence please do not wait for the status quo to fix itself it's up to you to do that it's your responsibility to know these things it's up to you to think hard because thinking easy is giving up thinking easy is letting the 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 loud minority or the death throes of the specter of christianity to win and we will not give it that ground so go yes. out and make a difference it's called Should the tyranny to... the tyranny of the minority right the tyranny mm. of the minority i love it well, dread you got thoughts before we head up and anything you think um about? yeah again i i'm just you know everyone i talk to i try to reframe the issue like i said from pro-life and pro-choice to pro-autonomy and pro-ideology and, and just trying to reframe the whole matter so that people can kind of have a you know see it in a new light i guess yes yeah if anything i'm anti i'm anti-racism i'm not just well i guess yeah I, or anti ideologies in some ways too i don't know well, yeah, well, i'll have yeah. to think about some more Dre inequality inequality Ooh, anti-inequality i love it boudreaux yeah. i love that boudreaux what do you think yeah uh, i guess it's kind of interesting to think about this uh issue too, uh, through the lens of free will being an illusion too. You know, when you think about- Don't start on free will. We got three minutes Damn left in this show. We do not have time for this. Boudreaux, come on. It helps, it helps me like think about, you know, how uh, we need access to uh, abortions for, for all kinds of reasons things can happen. And and especially when you, when you take away the, uh, the piece that makes them someone doing it doing something wrong so i, I don't right. know it, it, it's a it's a nice way to frame it for me it's literally like cutting slits into seat belts and being like well i don't like car crashes so we should not have seat belts it's like dude right. when you need a seat belt yeah. it needs to work that's why yes. abortions need to exist because when they need to be done they need to be done safely that's why yeah. these need to be funded like don't think don't connotize it with car crashes it's what you do to help yourself from not causing more damage when you're in a car crash Anyway, yeah. sorry for that rant. Yeah. Uh, John Richards, thoughts and anything you'd like to plug? Yeah, sure. Well, I'm hoping the good side of this, if there is one, is that hopefully more women will be mobilized to vote in the right direction. Yes. And I guarantee yeah. you, if we had a more representative women sect in our government, we wouldn't even be discussing. Oh, my gosh. How many people are joining the show? Guys. <laughs> the end of the show. Yeah, at the end of the show. Soon. Yeah. Fabi, any thoughts? And we can leave it because we're we're getting towards the end of the show. I'd love to spend the time with you. Uh, any final thoughts on today's show? Just to support support the um, the local abortion funds. Yeah. And, re and I will repeat again the the addresses, which is the Brigitte Alliance. Um, just search that on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And the doctor Jennifer Lincoln and her site, which is three for freedom dot com. Uh, that's it. That is very, very important for access yes. for everyone. And if all things fail, think, don't think easily. Think hard about everything, particularly about this, because when you don't, it's when the bad guys win. We're not going to let that happen. We're going to think critically. We're going to think hard about everything. Larry, would you mind getting ready to take us out? And then we can do after show a roundup. I'm ready. Um, no, I'd just like to say that if you don't want an abortion, don't have one. If you don't mm -hmm. think your family should have an abortion because of your religion, don't have one. You don't get the right to make the decision for the rest of the country. Exactly. It's just, it's that simple. Um, my content personally can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button on our, for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and articles on the subject of atheism. My YouTube channel can be found by searching for Doubter 5 or Digital Free Thought Radio. Uh, you can find my book, Atheism, What's It All About, on Amazon. And thank you for joining us on the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. 
and also that everybody is going to somebody else's hell the time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real until then don't sweat it enjoy your life and we'll see you next week say bye everybody bye, bye everybody bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye. ramen <laughs>